Hey everyone, I'm posting this a day or two later than usual after Ghislaine Maxwell seemingly managed to survive the past weekend in prison. I guess I'll have to save that cartoon for another week. It's something that indeed surprised many others, not least the people who've already paid their lawyers to make her disappear. I mean, sort of make the legal matter disappear. You know how these things work out, though. We all know if we see what appear to be guard dogs in the prison, those are actually seeing eye dogs for the legally blind prison staff put in charge of her safety. Nonetheless, the main story this week has been the furore about Roger Stone, the political consultant and lobbyist who's been one of the few people charged with something to come out of the Mueller report. The other people charged? The US taxpayer, of course. They were charged tens of millions of dollars to pay for that investigation that ultimately showed that the 2016 Trump campaign had about as much Russian influence as the works of Geoffrey Chaucer. The narrative woven against the president certainly turned out to be no less fictional than those in the Canterbury Tales. You maybe imagine the Clark or the Knight inventing the story of Roger Stone if the progressive left hadn't already left to start a protest movement after hearing some of Chaucer's earlier tales. I'm not sure if the wife of Bath had a Twitter account or not. I'm tempted to suggest no, given it was the 14th century, but then publishers are quite keen to retroactively airbrush and change the past to suit today's moral and ethical standards, so who knows what on earth the latest version contains or what they're teaching at GCSE. Nonetheless, there remains two questions. Was he guilty and was President Trump wrong for commuting the sentence? The answer to the first part is simple enough, yes, he did lie to Congress. He probably thought it was a done thing given the sort of people who he'd worked with in Congress on a daily basis. Part two, though, was more subtle because the prosecution, trial and sentencing of Roger Stone were about as fair as that game at the side of the road with the cups and the balls where you lose $20 or £20 depending what country you happen to be getting scammed in. The whole grift of prosecuting Roger Stone was more about justifying the investigation that ultimately turned out to contain less than one of Robert Maxwell's pension plans. One key factor being that the jury was led by a foreman who was a semi-professional anti-Trump actor activist and major democratic fundraiser. It's also worth noting that President Trump didn't actually pardon Stone, he simply commuted the sentence. And that's a subtle but important difference. But subtlety is often lost in these sort of people, of the types that own an electric car because wielding a petrol pump reminds them of a handgun and they're easily triggered. I guess I could also list off a litany of other presidents who commuted sentences in the past, they all do it. An especially corrupt example being Bill Clinton who uses executive authority to get his brother off the hook. I guess it's an executive power that Prince Andrew really wishes that his mother employed a bit more. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.